In this lesson, you will learn how to approximate the value of an irrational number. Let's review the difference between rational and irrational numbers first. A rational number is one that can be written in the form of a fraction of p over q, where p and q are both integers and q is not zero. If you divide p by q, there are two different types of decimals that you can get for rational numbers, and let me show you examples of each. The first type of decimal is called a terminating decimal. And in a terminating decimal, the digits after the decimal point have a definitive end. They don't continue on forever. And here's an example of a terminating decimal, 4.56. After the 6, there are no more digits. The second type of decimal that you can get is a repeating decimal. And some examples are 2.22222, and these dots down here indicate the number continues on forever. And another example is 46.545454. Again, this will repeat forever. Now, in a repeating number, either a single digit or a group of digits in a specific pattern repeat forever. And the way to mark this is you can rewrite the number by putting a bar over the digit or group of digits that repeats. Now, there are some numbers that are non-terminating and have no repeating pattern, and these are irrational numbers. Let me show you some examples. Irrational numbers cannot be written as a fraction of p over q. And so here are some examples. You have 5.3152867, and the dots mean that it's going to continue on forever. As you can see, there is no repeating pattern, and the decimals do not end. So this is an irrational number. Another irrational number is the square root of 2, which has a value of 1.4142135, dot, 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 dot. It would continue on forever. And square root of non-perfect squares are irrational. But sometimes you want to be able to approximate their value. So you want to be able to look at something like the square root of 7, which is 7 is not a perfect square. And you want to be able to say, well, square root of 7 is probably going to be about x. Now let me show you how to approximate that number. And then you'll be able to solve problems on your own. Let's approximate the value of the square root of 5. Since 5 is not a perfect square, right, there is no whole number that you can multiply by itself to get a product of 5 you're going to have to find an approximate value by finding the two perfect squares that 5 falls in between. So find the fir first perfect square that comes before 5, and that is going to be 4, right? Because 2 times 2 equals 4, and 4 is right before 5. So we found the lower limit. So we know it's going to fall in between the square root of 4, and then the higher limit, or the upper number, is the next whole number is 3 times 3, and you get 9. 9 is a perfect square. So here's the upper limit, is the square root of 9. Somewhere in between the value of the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, you will find the square root of 5. And to figure out which value it will be closer to, either the square root of 4 or the square root of 9, you have to determine which, uh, which number, which perfect square, the square root of 5 is closer to. And to do that, the first approximation is very crude, right? You look here and you say, well, 4 and 5. 5 is closer to 4 than it is to 9, which means that the square root of 5 will be closer to the square root of 4 than it is to the square root of 9. So you have an idea that the square root of 5 is going to be somewhere closer to this end of the value or the number line that you're kind of loosely building here. Now let's find a rough idea of just how close the square root of 5 will be to the square root of 4. And to do that, I'm going to take the difference of the two perfect squares that the square root of 5 falls in between. So subtract, so take 9, subtract away 4, because those are the two perfect squares. You get 5. Then find how close 4 is to 5, because you've determined that the square root of 5 is going to be closer to the square root of 4. So 5 minus 4 is 1. And you divide these two differences. So you're going to divide 1 by 5, and you're going to get the fraction 1 fifth. And this number is your rough approximation. You're going to say now that the square root of 5 is about 1 fifth greater than the value of the square root of 4. Let me show you this on a number line. Here on the number line, the distance in between the value of the square root of 4 and the square root of 9 has been divided into five equal sections, and it's marked by these fractions. And you've already determined that the square root of 5 is going to be 1 fifth greater than the value of the square root of 4. Well, if you divide 1 by 5, or find the decimal value of 1 fifth, 
you will get 0 0.2. So this means that the square root of 5 is about 0 0.2 greater than the value of the square root of 4. And square root of 4 is 2. So let's approximate radical 5 or root 5 to be 2 plus 0 0.2, which is 2.2. If you go ahead and you calculate the actual value of the square root of 5, you get something that is like 2.24, and it's going to continue on forever, right, because it's irrational. Look how close these numbers are, this number and this number. When you approximated using the method I showed you, you got pretty close to the actual answer. So this is a good method for approximating the value of any non-perfect square. In this lesson, you've learned how to approximate the value of an irrational number. Thanks for watching.